Hey guys, Chip here. So let's talk about creating inserts in KitOps. And I'm going to start with the documentation and you can get to that by pressing the question mark button on your interface. This documentation covers everything, including both free and the pro versions. And if you scroll on the table of contents, you'll see that we go through regular mode and smart mode, which we have just recently gone over. And then we get to the factory mode and factory mode, of course, is only available in pro in here is a very comprehensive explanation of how to use factory mode. And I'm going to kind of go over that now. So it's absolutely important that you understand exactly the KPAC hierarchy. And you can do that by moving over to the important concepts under to install KPACs. And when you go here, you'll understand that KPACs are folders of special blend files. And bl those blend files we call inserts. And they have special properties that have been assigned to them. And that's the reason why KitOps understands what they are. The other thing to know is that when you install a KPAC, you don't install the actual KPAC folder. You install the folder above the KPAC folder. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So keep in mind that you can store your KPAC folders anywhere you want. I keep mine on my Dropbox. And if I go into one, let's say I go into something like EV Materials, this is the actual file that you'll get if you purchase it. And when you uncompress it or unzip it, you'll get this folder. And inside this folder are all of these other folders. These are your KPAX folders. So anything inside of here is going to be a blend file and a thumbnail. So each thumbnail will represent what is in the blend file. And that's basically it. So as you're editing and creating inserts, you're going to want to be sure and store them directly in the correct KPAC folder. And then when you install them, you don't install individual folders. You'll install the master folder. And we talk about how to do that on the install video. So check that out if you want to learn more about how to install KPACs. Okay, so let's talk about the anatomy of an insert. I'm going to start with some basic ones. I'll go into the cutters simple. These are very, very simple difference only Boolean cutters. And I'll just take the default one. And it used to be I had to browse for this inside the KitOps structure. This one's called Advanced Cube 1. And I would go and say File, Open, and I go into my Master Megatech, my Master Folder, then go into my Simple, sort them by name, and that would be it right there. But there's actually a shortcut in the new KitOps, and that's this Edit Insert button. I can open them up, and it will open it up like this, which is a legacy layout that uh, Jerry used to set this up. So what I would recommend doing is going into your preferences and under save and load, turn off load UI. And then when you go back into KitOps and you choose a simple cutter and you say edit insert, it's going to open up in the interface you're used to. So now with this open, we're going to take a look at this and we see we've got two parts. This part is a part that's used to select the cutter. And frankly, it's not even necessary. Uh, Jerry liked using these and he sets this to wire and he also sets it to the main object. And this is the actual difference, the piece that cuts into it. And it's really very simple. One of the things to note is that one is the child of the other. So if this is the plane, we'll see that the cutter is this cube. And it's very important when you create inserts that you have a parent child hierarchy. And the parent is always the main object. And so that's a real important concept. Uh, I try not to use auto parent. It can try and figure things out. But a lot of times you may find that setting up your own parenting schemes may help you, especially in more complex inserts. So this is a very simple and easy to understand insert. Let's look at a more complex one. So I'll go in and I'm going to look at this MA Objects Controls KPAC. And I'll grab this keyboard numpad and then I'll edit that insert. And as you can see, I'll select everything, hit the period key to zoom up on it. It's fairly small uh, and it has actually this cutter, which is the main object. And then inside it has the keyboard and the keyboard is a solid object. So as we create these, we want to make sure we tell KitOps whether to use solid wire or cutter. The other thing we need to know is it's called side view. Wherever the origin is for the insert is where it's going to place it. Now I can take this and move it up and save it like this and it'll still insert properly. But the reason why I like to put it down on the ground is because when I say load render scene camera to insert, it's going to cut properly into the render scene. And that's a key component here. So I always try and put that cutting point at zero zero. So when I load the render scene, it's going to render correctly. 
you can see there's our render scene all set up and ready to go. I hit the render thumbnail and I'm good. And then I can close the thumbnail scene. So another thing to be careful of as you set this up is to make sure that all of the objects are scaled properly. Let's look at our cutter and see that it's scaled 111 and rotations all at zero. And that's good. If I go inside my child object, I'll see that I have a improper rotation. And so what I'll do is I'll go under object, apply rotation. Now it's at zero and making sure that all the child and parent objects are set with the proper rotation and the proper scale is very important because if you don't do that, they may look fine here, but when you apply them, they could be really screwed up. So when we open up these inserts like we just did, we call this new scene factory mode, meaning that we opened up a blank scene and we start working directly in it and then we save it and then we can open up another file and test our scene. And that's typically the way KitOps used to work, but there's a new mode for authoring inserts in factory and that's called in scene factory mode. And let's talk about that. I'm going to start with a new file here and I'll turn on material mode so we can see, kind of see what's going on. And I'm going to add a mesh, which is just going to be nothing more than a cylinder. And I'm going to move it up like this and scale it in and move it up. And then I'll shade smooth and go over here and auto smooth it. So now that I have this set up, I'll select this and I'll select this. Then I'll go into my preferences and add ons. I'm going to search for bool tool. I will use that, turn it on, save my preferences. And with this selected and then this selected, I hit the control and the numpad minus, and it gives me a nice cutter right here. Now, I've got a very strong smoothing artifact issue here. And why is that? Well, let's go look at my modifiers. You'll see that my weighted normal is above the boot tool cylinder. And so I just need to move that down and now it'll be good. So now that that's there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object directly and I'll go into kit ops and I'm going to say create insert. And when I click this, I'll come in here and I've got this insert already set up and ready for me in a scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and use the clear location, which is Alt G, and that's going to stick it down in the ground. Now you'll notice that it hasn't cut a hole for us. And why is that? Well, that's because we haven't really told it it's a cutter, even though it's labeled as cutter. But once I click over here on cutter, I've got it set and that's just great. So now that I've got that done, I can actually continue to edit in here. If I do this, I'm making it more and more shallow. But the problem with that is now notice I've got a weird scale. And so what I'll do is again, I'll go object, apply, scale. And now that's correct. So this is just a hole. So let's go back into my kit ops. Notice that I've made it a, a difference. I also could have made it a union, right? So if I make it a union, it's going to actually add to the object. That way I can do fillets and things like that around it. So difference, I'll leave it as a difference for now. I'm going to call this Fred and I'm going to save the insert. And I have to save it into a current K pack that I have loaded. So I'm going to go into this test. I have a Fred here. I'm going to save the insert there. And now I'm going to say camera to insert, hit the zero key on my numpad so I can see it. Click over here to see what the render is going to look like. Say render thumbnail, close the factory scene. And here we're back. Now, one thing that we'll notice is that we have our new insert, but this is not the insert. This is still just a cylinder. So if I go back into this and I hit delete, and then I come back in here and delete our Boolean modifier. Now, when I add this insert, let's set it medium. So you'll see that I can, I can do that. And in smart mode, I can shift click, of course, and go around and around and around until I hit the escape key. So, so that's the new in scene editing mode. Okay, so let's try a more complex insert. So I'll do the same things I did before. I'll add a mesh cylinder. I'll scale it down. GZ to move it up. Shade smooth. Turn on auto smooth. Then what I want to do is control minus and of course go back into my modifiers. Move it up one. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll take the same object and let's go ahead and make sure that we're previewing it correctly. Display as wire. And I'll shift D and Z it up a little bit and move it down something like this and scale it something like that. And let's make this solid so we can kind of see what's going on. Let's give it a material Chrome, something like that. Maybe move it up just a little bit more and then we'll add a bevel to it. 
angle and that's good and now I'm going to actually put a hole in the middle of it so I'm going to say shift D again Z up scale scale this up so now it should be going in and then shift click on this and then this and control minus that and now we have our hole and then on this this object I'm going to add one more bevel and use hard normals on so now we have this kind of like a, a weird looking little uh, kind of a rivet or something like that now that we have that what I'm going to do I'm going to take all of this 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 and this and pair it to the cutter and we're going to say create an insert now watch what happens up here so we're going to create an insert and what we're doing is we're in a brand new scene we still have the old scene but now we're in a new scene with this scene we can look at our objects and we're going to notice first off we have a variety of different scales and everything so i'm going to go through here first and i am going to take this object and say control a and I want to set the scale and I'm going to apply the transformation for scale and it doesn't have any rotation so we're pretty good there alt G to put it down on the ground so that helps next I will go into our our object here and I'm going to actually drag it down just a little bit as well as this cutter this object also needs to be control a set to scale you notice it messed with our bevel when we did that so we have to go in and fix that in the bevel we'll just take that offset and just bring it out a little bit make sure on angle and then the last bevel we also want to be on angle and we will set that a little smaller as well something like that okay this object we're also going to say control a scale we're going to modify the bevel on that the cutter and I think we're in pretty good shape now one thing we're going to see that when we actually save this out we may run into a problem and let me show you what I'm talking about so I'm going to go in and make sure that I have all of these parented correctly because currently they're not. So I'll take this and this and this and we'll go object, parent, object. And notice that everything moved all over. So I'm going to say keep transform and that fixes it. So that's one of the things that we want to be paying attention to. Next thing we want to do is let's go into KitOps, figure out what's what. Here's our cutter and it's our main object and then this is a solid and this right here is another cutter but it's not a main object it's called an insert type because it's cutting into the insert it's not cutting into the main object so that's a key component right there we use that as the insert type right there now let's go ahead and we're going to call this Fred and I'm going to save the insert and then camera to insert and there it is and I'll say uh, render thumbnail this can take a little while just so you know because we are rendering with cycles we'll go back to close factory scene and as you recall we have all this stuff in here that we're gonna need to be able to delete so I'll hit X delete and then I'll go into here and I'm gonna delete my cylinder now notice my weighted normals here it's at the very end and if I go into my preferences and I look at my kit ops general you see that I have sort modifiers I have sort weighted normal turned on and that way it'll always keep that at the end so as I add this insert okay and I go back into my modifier here you'll see that it put the insert in here not in the bottom so it keeps the weighted normal so that's an example of a more complex insert design I think you can now see how easy it is to create inserts and then use them over and over on multiple objects and multiple projects so the last thing I want to show you is how easy it is to create materials. So let's take this box, for instance, and we're just going to go in and I'm going to delete this material and let's call this plastic red. And the base color, of course, is going to be like a red. And we'll make the roughness something like this. And really, that's our new plastic red material. And say I want to save that. So I can go over here and let's go to our test and we're actually in that specific k path it'll save there and what i'll do is say create material insert once i'm here i'll hit plastic red it's already saved save insert i'll save it right there then i'll say render thumbnail once the blue turns off like that i'll close factory scene and now if i go down in here i've got the 
material right there. So I can just take this, add material directly to that. So that's how easy it is to create your own materials in KidOps 2. So that's the basic course for creating your own inserts and using the new in-scene factory mode. I'll be sure and post new videos showing some even more advanced techniques in the near future. Thanks for watching. See you online.